Most of you aren't subscribed. Make sure to subscribe, as it helps out the channel. Without further ado, our story starts with our group of heroes, heading to the royal capital, all wondering what types of celebrations are happening in town. The hero wonders what types of jobs they'll have in the future, especially because the demon king is now defeated, prompting the priest to wonder if he can find a job where he can drink. The hero turns to the elf, Freerin, asking Freerin how she'll spend her life, especially since elven lives are very long. As the hero's party march through town, they are praised and celebrated, only to stand before the king, who acknowledges their party to house Himmel the hero, Isen the warrior, Hyder the priest and Freerin the mage. Thanking the heroes for slaying the demon king, we cut to that night where the town is celebrating their newfound peace, cutting to Himmel who tells everyone that there will be statues of them erected. As Freerin mocks the town for only giving them 10 copper coins when they first started their adventure, Hyder states that everything is now behind them and instead they should celebrate. As the gang gaze off into the night sky, they all acknowledge that it's been 10 years since they started adventuring, reminiscing on their first day, where Himmel and Isen were almost executed for bad-mouthing the king. They also remember times when Hyder would get so drunk during their adventures and Freerin would constantly fall for the most basic of traps, all erupting into laughter for only remembering bad memories. Taking a breath, Himmel thanks everyone for the 10 years they spent together, but Freerin wonders what's so amazing about 10 years, reminded that 10 years by human standards is a long time. Just then, they all turn to face the night sky, spotting the era meteor shower that only occurs once every 50 years. As the gang bicker about not getting to see the full beauty of the meteor shower from the city, Freerin utters that she'll take them to a better location next time they see it, making Himmel chuckle, grateful for the memories. The next morning, the party bid goodbye to Freerin, who plans on exploring the central lands to collect and learn more spells. As Freerin leaves, the others wonder how old Freerin truly is, cutting to several years later when Freerin has explored different locations, learned many new things, and has achieved many new goals. When Freerin visits a shopkeeper asking for a shadow dragon's horn, the shopkeeper states that shadow dragons haven't been alive for around 20 to 30 years, disappointing as Freerin needs a shadow dragon horn for her experiments. Freerin remembers that Himmel collected a shadow dragon horn in the Demon King castle, reasoning that she'll visit to watch the meteor shower with everyone whilst also collecting the shadow dragon horn. As Freerin walks through the capital, she's amazed to see everything has changed over the years, hearing Himmel's voice, but as she turns around, Freerin realizes that Himmel has grown quite old. Himmel states that it's been 50 years, both sitting down, only for Freerin to ask about the dragon horn. Remembering the memories from collecting the horn, Himmel happily gives Freerin the horn, telling Freerin that although she doesn't treasure the dragon's horn as much, Himmel himself never forgot the time spent collecting the horn. As Freerin heads outside to deliver the horn, she wonders what's the big deal about a lousy dragon's horn, only to head inside, asking Himmel to head out for the meteor shower. As they leave town, Freerin greets Isen and Hyder, who are amazed to see Freerin hasn't aged one bit, but Freerin is still against Hyder patting her head. Freerin praises Isen for seeming the same since they last met, something they all know is due to Isen's dwarf heritage. As they begin to head off, Freerin tells them that the spot she picked out takes a week to travel to, but seeing as this is like the old days, they all gladly follow Freerin. As the gang tell stories over campfire and battle monsters like the old days, they all eventually make it to a lake, where Himmel thanks Freerin for their final adventure together, completely captivated by their final meteor shower together. With some more time passing, Himmel's finally passes, prompting Freerin and the others to attend Himmel's funeral, but Freerin is scolded for not showing any emotions, making her wonder what this strange feeling that is bubbling up inside her. As the day proceeds, Freerin begins reminiscing on her time with Himmel, all whilst watching his casket be buried, only to break down crying, regretting not spending more time to get to know Himmel better. A few days afterwards, Hyder reveals that he'll be heading back to the Holy City, getting one last look at Freerin as Hyder states he'll probably pass away soon due to all the drinking. As Hyder bids Azen and Freerin farewell, Freerin reveals that she will be starting her new exploration into humans, asking Azen to accompany her on her new journey but Azen reveals that he too has grown old, asking Freerin to not to look so sad. Seeing as there is nothing left, Freerin bids Azen farewell, both heading in the opposite directions, only to cut to 20 years after Himmel's passing, where Freerin is lost in the forest outside the holy city. 
Just then a young girl appears, asking if Freeran is lost, but when Freeran asks to know where Hyder lives, the young girl takes Freeran to Hyder's home. Happy to hear that Hyder is still alive, Hyder admits that it wasn't too easy to pass away, happy to hear that Freeran has brought some alcohol for his grave, but Hyder reveals he had stopped drinking ages ago. Seeing the adorable girl serve herself and Hyder some tea, Freeran learns the girl's name is Fern, a war orphan from the southern lands. Freeran finds it unusual for Hyder to adopt Himmel's kindness, but Hyder is more curious as to why Freeran is visiting him, pleased to hear that Freeran just so happened to be visiting whilst on her adventure to learn more about humans. Pleased to hear this, Hyder asks if Freeran would be willing to take Fern as her apprentice mage, but Freeran is sternly against this, reminding Hyder how easy it is for apprentice mages to pass away during battle. Understanding of Freeran's decision, Hyder gives Freeran an ancient grimoire from the tomb of Uig the Sage, a book meant to contain lost spells for resurrection and immortality. Amazed that such a grimoire still existed, Freeran states that it'll take at least five to six years to decipher the text, but upon hearing this Hyder reveals that he is indeed quite afraid of dying, asking for Freeran to give him the slightest hope for immortality. As repayment for the grimoire, Freeran agrees to teach Fern some spells, cutting to later that day where Freeran had finally managed to track down Fern waiting for her on the cliff of a forest, impressed that Fern is able to conceal her mana so well. Fern states that Hyder will give Fern the title of mage if Fern manages to blast a hole in a boulder across from them, something Freeran praises Hyder for setting Fern. Out of nowhere, Fern conjures a powerful beam of magic, but the beam falls short of reaching the boulder, giving Freeran some motivation to teach Fern happy to hear that Fern likes magic just like herself. Taking Fern to a nearby waterfall, Freeran tells Fern that long-range magic consists of three key factors, these being mana capacity, strength of firing the spell and the level of the mage itself. When Fern confirms she knows this already, Freeran states that Fern's spell falling short means Fern is lacking in mana firing strength, something Fern will need to spend time on. Seeing Fern upset, Freeran reminds Fern that her magic control is still very high, something very unique especially for such a young age. That night, Freeran shares a meal with Hyder and Fern, only to end the night by studying the grimoire. With several years of Freeran training Fern, all three spending time together and Freeran deciphering the grimoire, Freeran reports to Hyder that Fern has grown so much in four years. With Hyder happy to hear that, Freeran mentions how she'll probably finish deciphering the grimoire before Fern becomes a fully-fledged mage, but as Freeran turns to check on Hyder's reaction, she spots Hyder has collapsed. As Freeran moves Hyder to his bed, Hyder apologizes for the trouble, asking Freeran to not look so sad. With Freeran promising to decipher grimoire fast, Freeran first heads out to inform Fern that Hyder has collapsed, asking Fern to halt her training to look after Hyder. Sadly, Fern states that if she stops now, she won't be able to show Hyder how strong she's gotten before Hyder passes, revealing that Hyder was the one that saved her. Flashing back, a young Fern is seen grasping onto a necklace with a picture of her family, wondering if she should take her own life. Out of nowhere, Hyder appears, advising Fern to reconsider her actions as Hyder once had a friend that had passed away. Hyder states that his friend was the epitome of justice, and Hyder had wished that his life was taken instead of his friend, but since his friend is no longer with him, Hyder states that he'll stay alive to ensure the memories of his precious friends live on. With the young Fern remembering the memories she had with her family, Fern in the present declares that Hyder had always feared of leaving Fern alone, therefore Fern states that she wants to show Hyder she can fend for herself before Hyder passes away. With Freeran understanding Fern's wishes, Freeran states that she'll allow Fern to do as she pleases, heading back to continue deciphering the grimoire. As more time passes, Fern is seen continuing to improve her mana capacity and firing strength, all whilst Freeran finishes up deciphering the grimoire, only to ask if Hyder already knew the grimoire didn't contain any spells to bring back the dead nor immortality. Hyder reveals that magic for immortality doesn't exist, Happy to hear that Freeran now considers Fern a mage, meaning Freeran can finally take Fern with her on her travels. With Freeran realizing Hyder had tricked her into training Fern, Hyder states that her reward is in the nearby drawer, asking for Freeran to take Fern and leave by tonight. Freeran calls out Hyder for trying to act tough, revealing that Fern has been waiting to say goodbye to Hyder, breaking down as Freeran orders Hyder to spend his remaining time with Fern. 
As Freerin goes on a walk, Freerin learns that Hyder had saved Fern knowing that Himmel would have done the exact same thing, leaving Hyder and Fern alone, only to confirm that Fern had managed to reach the boulder. The next day marks the death of Hyder, prompting Fern and Freerin to pour out some booze on Hyder's tombstone, only for them to head elsewhere. With 26 years passing since Himmel's death, Fern and Freerin continue to adventure together, both completing tasks in order to acquire new spells. Their most recent spell produces warm tea, whereas some previous ones involved removing rust from bronze statues and turning sweet grapes sour. As the two head to their next adventure, they meet up with an old lady, guided to an old statue of Himmel. The lady reveals that her town was attacked by a monster years ago, but luckily Himmel had arrived and saved them, ultimately leading to a statue of Himmel being made of him. When the old lady mentions how sad it is to see the statue all beat up, Freerin corrects her, stating that it's Himmel's fault for accepting a statue of himself be made, something that reminds the lady that there was an elf with Himmel at the time. Without saying any more, Freerin helps clean up the statue, pleasing the lady, but the old lady finds it sad that the scenery around the statue is too plain. Before Freerin can use a spell to grow some flowers, Freerin suddenly remembers Himmel's favorite flower, the blue moon weed. As the old lady takes them back to her home, she's surprised to hear Freerin knows about the blue moon weeds, as they used to grow in a nearby forest, but have since long died out. Seeing Fern acting weird, Freerin asks to see what Fern is hiding, discovering that Fern has been hiding seed rats in her coat, intending on setting them free. With both girls heading out, Freerin states that they'll be heading to the nearby forest in hopes of finding some blue moon weeds, something Freerin acknowledges is for her own selfish desires. With several months of Freerin and Fern searching for the blue moon weed, the girls grow used to spending time in town, with the old lady and out in the fields. One day, Fern has a chat with the old lady, sad to see that Freerin is fixated on searching for this non-existent flower, even though Freerin could be saving lives. Hearing Fern so intellectually convey her feelings, the lady hands Fern a bag of seeds, asking Fern to tell Freerin how she truly feels. Mustering up the courage, Fern tells Freerin how she feels, prompting Freerin to apologize, as she promises to end her search soon. Fern demands to know when, but Freerin points out that a nearby seed rat is leaving behind a trail and that they should follow it. As the girls chase after the seed rat, Fern wonders why Freerin is so fixated on collecting spells, but Freerin states she only started collecting spells because a special someone had begun complimenting her knowledge on spells. As both girls stop in front of an abandoned building, Freerin states that seed rats often hide seeds in different locations, but when Freerin catches a blue petal, Freerin leaps onto the top of the building. Flashing back, Freerin remembers a time when Himmel had told Freerin his favorite flower was the blue moon weed, hoping to show Freerin one day. On top of the building, Freerin is amazed to see so many blue moon weeds, grateful to finally lay eyes on them. As Fern follows after Freerin, Fern still can't understand why Freerin loves collecting spells, but Freerin reminds Fern that Fern became a mage to impress Hyder, something very similar to Freerin's situation. As the girls return to show off their work to the old lady, the old lady praises the girls for decorating the statue, but before Freerin leaves, she repays Hyder for his gift in the past. On the 27th year since Himmel's passing, Freerin and Fern are seen visiting a trading city of Warm, where Freerin has asked to split up to restock on supplies. When Fern calls out Freerin for making her buy everything, Fern has a bad feeling when Freerin goes off on her own to buy things, having bought a massive skull in the past, clothes dissolving potions and even random books. When the two split up, Fern chooses to follow Freerin, fearing their traveling expenses will go to waste, but spots Freerin in front of an accessory store. With Freerin distraught at what to purchase, Freerin ends up settling on something, prompting Fern to continue to tail Freerin. Whilst passing through some alleys, Fern wonders if she should leave Freerin be, but when she overhears that Freerin is planning on buying some desserts, Fern gets jealous, having not had any desserts in months. Following Freerin into a smoky tavern, Fern gets worried that Freerin is lost, spotting Freerin speaking with some scary-looking men. As Freerin leaves the tavern, Fern notices that she's heading back to the inn, rushing to finish off her duties, only to apologize for finishing shopping so late. Brushing that aside, Freerin takes Fern to the recommended dessert store, allowing Fern to buy whatever dessert she wants, revealing that she had been saving up money to treat Fern and herself. 
When Fern asks what Freerin would like, Fern states that she already knows Freerin wants Merker Pudding, reminding Freerin of her time with the heroes. Where Himmel had mentioned that he knows Freerin's favorite dessert is the Merker Pudding. When Freerin feels bad for not knowing much about the others, Himmel mentions his favorite food is an omelet. Azen's favorite food are sour grapes and Hyder simply loves alcohol. As Fern digs into her dessert, Freerin apologizes for not knowing more about Fern, handing Fern a gift, pleasing Fern as Freerin remembered Fern's birthday. Fern smiles upon receiving a hair ornament, telling Freerin that it's enough of a birthday gift that Freerin remembered her birthday, confusing Freerin. The next day, the two leave the city, but as Fern walks alongside Freerin with her new hair ornament, Fern asks what the end goal of their adventures are. Freerin simply states that she's simply collecting as many spells as possible, but she does want to retrace her memories with the hero party, something Fern is curious about. When Fern walks beside Freerin, Freerin realizes that Fern is now 16 and taller than her, but gets jealous at how Fern has already outgrown her in other areas. In the Forest of Grobe, Freerin is seen testing out Fern's defensive spells, pointing out how the gaps in Fern's barrier will be the downfall. When Freerin fires multiple projectiles, Fern manages to block with a simple barrier around her body, but ultimately runs out of mana. As the two continue through the forest, Freerin reminds Fern that defensive magic is powerful, but it depletes mana very fast, therefore it's best to only cast barriers at the points of impact. As they both cross a river, Fern states that she simply needs to master a single defensive spell, but Freerin scolds her for not reading the book she gave her, as magic theory is just as important as practical applications. Finally arriving at a village, Fern wonders what spells Freerin intends to collect at the village, but Freerin states that she's here for other reasons. Upon approaching some villagers, a village elder immediately recognizes Freerin's white elven hair, leading Freerin to where Qual was sealed. Along the way, Freerin tells Fern that Qual is the Elder Sage of Corruption, a demon that terrorized people for 80 years, up until Himmel and his party sealed him. When Freerin wonders how the Elder knew who she was, the Elder reveals that Himmel would always visit up until his passing, but spoke highly of Freerin, stating that she would take over and watch the seal when Himmel's was gone. Upon arriving at Qual's seal, Freerin confirms that the seal is indeed weakening, but Freerin will break the seal and defeat Qual the next day. With Fern and Freerin staying the night, Fern deduces that Freerin was the one that sealed Qual, wondering why the heroes choose to seal the demon. Freerin reveals that their party were unable to defeat the demon, as Qual was a powerful mage, having invented the Zoltrok piercing spell, first of its kind that could pierce any sort of defense and destroy the target's body. Legend says that 40% of adventurers and 70% of mages were defeated by that single spell, but hearing something so powerful Fern wonders how Qual can be defeated, but Freerin reveals such a powerful spell has its downsides. When Fern continues to ask more questions, Freerin scolds Fern for not reading the book she gave her, stating that Fern will have her questions answered tomorrow. With the big day arriving, the two girls stand before Qual, only for Freerin to warn Fern to be on guard, all whilst Freerin lifts Qual's seal. Glad to be free, Qual learns that he's been sealed for 80 years and that the Demon King had been defeated in his absence. Annoyed, Qual proceeds to cast his Zoltrok, prompting Freerin to instruct Fern to erect a barrier, but when the dust clears, Fern's barrier manages to easily block Qual's killing spell. With Fern demanding to know why her basic barrier was able to block such a deadly spell, Freerin reveals that ever since Qual was sealed away, all of humankind had dedicated resources to studying and defending against the killing spell. After a few years the humans incorporated said spells into their systems, and as a result all types of defense magic were improved thanks to Qual. Amazed at what the humans were able to develop in the 80 years that he was sealed, Qual analyzes Fern's barrier, noting how the barrier changes depending on the type of offensive magic, meaning the spell consumes a huge amount of mana. As Qual erupts with power, Freerin orders Fern to protect both of them as efficiently as possible prompting Fern to erect barriers only in the location of Qual's projectiles. Unleashing a massive beam of magic, Qual is impressed that Fern is still able to block his overwhelming magic, but spots Freerin is now floating in the sky, helplessly watching as Freerin casts her own Zoltrok killing spell. As Qual begins to disappear, Freerin and Fern head back to the village where Freerin is thanked by the village elder, grateful that they can now live in peace. When the elder hands Freerin his hat, 
Freerin recognizes the elder as the cheeky brat that flipped her skirt when they first sealed Qual. As the girls leave by carriage, Fern is seen finally reading the book Freerin gave her, but Freerin is glad that she could fulfill Himmel's trust and bring peace to the village once and for all. With the girls heading over to the Grants Channel, Freerin is sad to see the beach is littered with debris, unfortunate as the nearby village used to all clean the beach, but now there isn't enough manpower to tidy up the beach. The village elder requests that Freerin clean up the beach, handing Freerin a grimoire belonging to the legendary mage Flong, but Fern notices something suspicious. As Freerin accepts the offer, the elder leaves for now, but Fern states that she believes the grimoire is fake, something that Freerin already knows. Freerin is happy to see that Fern has been studying, revealing almost all books about Flom are usually fakes, but Freerin states that she needed an excuse to help return the beach to its former beauty. Skipping ahead to when snow has begun to fall, Fern is seen visiting a local bakery, chatting with the shopkeeper as Fern has been frequently purchasing bread from the bakery in the past three months. With Fern noting how it's already winter, Fern returns to a messy room, disappointed as Freerin is still asleep. As Freerin struggles to leave bed, Fern is forced to help change, dress and feed Freerin, dragging the sleepy elf through town and towards the beach. As the girls begin cleaning the beach, Fern points out how sloppy Freerin is, having been forced to take care of Freerin as if she were Freerin's mother. Fern wonders how Freerin behaved during her time with the hero party, but Freerin mentions how they were all very okay with Freerin oversleeping, but Freerin did get scolded once. With Fern curious to know more, the girls wrap up the day with a big fire using the debris, only to enjoy a nice dinner, reporting to the elder that they only have one third of the job left. The elder wonders if the girl will be done by the New Year's festival, something Freerin says will be possible, but when the elder mentions how Freerin can finally join them for watching the sunset this time, Freerin acts awfully cold. The next day, Fern asks if the reason Freerin wanted to clean the beach was related to the festival, learning that every New Year, the villagers would watch the sunrise. Freerin mentions how the beach is meant to beautifully reflect the sunrise, but admits that she never woke up early enough to actually watch the sunrise. With more time passing by, Fern continues to nurture our poor Freerin out of bed, both exploring the wrecked ships, discovering hidden gems, only to officially clean the beach of all debris. Completely mesmerized by the beach's beauty, the elder asks if Freerin will be joining them for the sunrise this year, shocking Fern when Freerin agrees to wake up early to see the sunrise. Fern wonders if Freerin will be able to wake up in time for the sunrise, but Freerin states that she'll simply stay up all night, and that she wants to see what's so amazing about this sunrise. As Freerin stays up that night, she thinks about a time when Himmel had scolded Freerin for sleeping in and missed the New Year sunrise in the same village, confused as to why a mere sunrise would cause Himmel to be so upset they didn't get to see it together. Sadly during the morning, Fern realized that Freerin is fast asleep, forced to drag Freerin out of bed, fearing that they'll miss the sunset. With both girls staring out into the horizon, Freerin notes how there is nothing special about the sunrise, but upon seeing that Fern is mesmerized by the sunrise's beauty, Freerin admits that Himmel was right, as she's enjoying the sunrise with Fern. Flashing back, we see Freerin and the hero party visiting the graves of Ison's family, learning that his village was attacked by demons. Heiter chooses to kneel before the graves, praying for their souls to go to heaven, but Ison mentions how he doesn't believe in the afterlife prompting Freerin to reveal that thousands of years ago everyone believed there was no afterlife, but since magic can't observe where souls go, it's hard to define what is truth and what isn't. Heiter states that since there is no actual proof for either side, Heiter likes to think there is a heaven, that way the people that are doing good for the world can at least pass believing that their life was worth it. With the hero party joining Heiter in praying for Ison's family, we cut to the present where Ison is once again praying for his family currently located in the bread region. Out of nowhere, Freerin calls out to Ison, weird as they haven't spoken to each other ever since Himmels passed away 30 years ago. As they all sit down for some tea, Ison is shocked to see Freerin has an apprentice, but Freerin asks if Ison needs help with anything, Ison mentions how Heiter and him had been updating each other with letters. Heading out, they all head to Vol Basin, a location Freerin recognizes learning that Ison intends to search for notes from Flom the legendary mage. When Freerin reminds Ison that most records on Flom are fake, Ison reveals that Heider and figured out the general location of Flom's true notes, based on records from the Holy City. 
With Freer and convinced, they all agree to start looking for a massive tree, but upon seeing Fern disappointed, Freerin states that they should hurry, surprising Ison as Freerin never cared for anyone else's time. With the gang beginning to search the entire forest, they spend the night eating and sleeping throughout the forest, only to search across the sea and in the skies. One day, Fern states that she has found a massive tree near some ruins, all beginning to head towards the tree, but Freerin uses the opportunity to ask Ison why he's searching for Flom's notes. Ison reveals that on the day of Himmel's death, Ison had seen how regretful Freerin felt for not using more time to get to know Himmel, revealing that the notes left behind were said to allow contact with the dead. When Freerin states that she doesn't believe in such nonsense, Ison states that it's better to know for sure, plus Himmel and Heider had agreed prior to help Freerin get to know Himmel better. Having made it to the massive tree, Fern states that there is a powerful barrier surrounding the tree, but when Freerin heads over to inspect the tree, she utters that even after a thousand years, her master is still superior to her. Flashing back, Freerin is seen with her master, wondering why her master is so fixated on protecting a small sapling, but her master states that in a thousand years' time, Freerin will grow to appreciate her master's lessons, reminding Freerin that her master is Flom the legendary mage. Within an instant, Freerin dispels the barrier guarding the entrance to Flom's notes. Upon glancing at the notes, Freerin is surprised the notes had already been opened to the page regarding communication with the dead, surprised her master knew Freerin would return. Flom states that the north of the continent housed the land of Oriol, where all the souls rest, a location that Flom had used to speak with her fallen allies. When Fern wonders if the notes can be trusted, Ison reminds Freerin to consider the best case scenario when unsure, prompting Freerin to reveal that Oriol is in the same direction as Enda, the current Demon King castle. With Ison asking Freerin to go for Himmel's sake, they all head back home via carriage, where Freerin is fast asleep, dreading the thought of going to such a cold place like the Demon King's castle. Sparking up a conversation, Ison asks how Freerin is treating Fern, impressed to hear that Freerin is retracing her adventures with the hero party, but is also trying to get to know Fern better. Hearing this, Ison thinks back to how cold Freerin was back then, having never imagined Freerin would take on an apprentice, but reassures Fern that Freerin is a great teacher. As they all return to Ison's home, Ison apologizes for not coming with them, checking to see if Freerin remembers the path to Enda, relieved to hear Freerin still remembers it through the Will region, across the Regal Canyon and past the northern land checkpoints. As Freerin begins to leave, Ison informs Fern that it'll be a ten-year adventure, reminding Freerin of her adventure with the hero party, but Freerin states that it won't take too long. Check out one of our other videos on the screen or in the info card above. Subscribe, like and comment.